Astor Place Station. I just dropped off some consignment stuff at St. Mark's Bookshop and had 15 minutes to make it to Grand Central Terminal or I'd be late for work. I got to the ornate Astor Place entrance to the uptown local and froze. A sea of commuters poured up the steps and broke around me like a wave on the beach. I just missed the train. I love you, Big Mike. <laughs> I paid my fare and walked up the empty platform. As I approached the garbage bins at the north end of the station, I passed the column and came face to face with a dude who was breathing heavily, his back to the tracks. I realized what was up right away, an idiot that I am pointed at them. Hey, you just jumped the rails and crossed the tracks. What's up with that? I said, smiling to show I was hit. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you, he said, staring right through me. Oh, no problem, I said nervously. I'm cool. I'm not going back to prison, he continued unblinking. I'm down with that, I said, my mind racing like a cockroach when you turn on the lights. <laughs> do you like the Yankees, he asked, stunning me. Oh, well, no, but I do like the Mets a bit, I answered stupidly, given the situation. <laughs> I don't want to hurt you, he said again. <laughs> That's true, it's so sad. Squaring his shoulders and striding off towards the distant exit. I looked down the platform and saw figures with flashlights searching the tracks. I was getting later and later for work, but I didn't know what to do. I'd made it through the 60s, and I didn't want to betray a brother to the man, <laughs> so I just stood there. A number six train, moving very slowly, finally pulled into the station, and I got on and sat down, shaking a little. Across from me, leaning against the door, was the biggest transit cop I'd ever seen with a tiny full moon of a face, all out of proportion. I wanted to ask him what had happened at the station we were leaving behind, but I figured if it had been something really bad, I'd be a material witness, so I shut up and went to work. <laughs> one other brief one, one other brief one. And I, this is actually, the, I guess, the anniversary of the, the, the nuclear bomb in Hiroshima wasn't that long ago, and a bunch of us got together at the Sidewalk Cafe, and, and we read a couple poems, sort of, uh, in memoriam, whatever. And there's a guy named Sparrow. You guys have to know we Sparrow, know right? Sparrow, yeah. yeah. With his, <laughs> Anyhow, Sparrow came up with this notion many years ago. We did a reading called The Silence Between the Bombs because there was three days, I believe, between Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So this is in The Silence Between the Bombs for Sparrow came, with the, came up with the idea of doing an event commemorating the fact that for a brief period, only one atomic bomb had been dropped in anger. A. Envy the great good fortune of the elderly Japanese kimono salesman. Oh, this is so racist. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Who on a sunny, sun, sunny afternoon of August 5th, 1945, decides to forego his customers in Hiroshima to visit a sick relative in southern Kyushu. B. Three days later, the salesman sits with his cousin in a perfectly arranged formal garden discussing his incredibly fortuitous decision given the recent events in Hiroshima, or Hiroshima. See, but note well the fickle danger of unknowable fate. His cousin's house is in a, is in a suburb of Nagasaki. I'm an idiot. 